K tutorial number 2, Defining Imp, lesson 4. Here we will complete the K definition of Imp and, while doing so, we will learn the very first step of what we call configuration abstraction and the semantic distinction between structural and computational rules. Let us add the remaining rules in the order in which the language constructs were defined in imp syntax. The rules for arithmetic and boolean constructs are self-explanatory. Note, however, that in all rules except those for the logical end, we inserted dynamic checks for the variable sorts. Indeed, we do not want to apply the rule for addition, for example, when the two arguments are not integers. In the rules for logical end, we prefer not to add a dynamic check b colon bx for two reasons. First, it can be shown that whenever any of these rules apply, b will indeed be a bx. That's because there is no rule that can touch such a b. This will become clearer shortly when we discuss the first step of configuration abstraction. Second, since we know that b will be a bx anyway, we can save the time it takes to check its sort. Such times may look minor, but they accumulate, so in general we try to avoid runtime checks as much as possible. The block rules are trivial. However, the rule for non-empty blocks works only because we do not have local variable declarations in imp. We will have to change this rule in imp++. The assignment rule has two rewrite arrows, one in the k cell dissolving the assignment statement and the other in the state updating the value of the assigned variable. Note that the one on the state is surrounded by parentheses. That is because the arrow, the rewrite arrow, is greedy. It matches as much as it can to the left and to the right until it reaches the cell boundaries, be them closed or open. If you want to limit its scope or for clarity, you can use parentheses as we used here. The rule for sequential composition simply desugars S1 followed by S2 into S1 followed by with the followed by K arrow S2. Indeed, the two have exactly the same semantics. Note that statements evaluate to nothing. So once S1 is processed in S1 followed by S2, then the next task is automatically S2 without wasting any step for the transition. The rules for the conditional and while statements are clear. One thing to keep in mind now is that the while unrolling rule will not apply indefinitely in the positive branch of the resulting conditional because of case configuration abstraction which will be discussed shortly. An imp program declares a set of variables and then executes a statement in the state obtained after initializing all those variables to zero. The rules for programs initialize the declared variables one by one, checking also that there are no duplicates. We check for duplicates only for demonstration purposes to illustrate the keys predefined operation that returns the set of keys of a map and the set membership operation in. In real life, we typically define a static type checker for our language, which we execute before the semantics and reject inappropriate programs. The use of the dot .ids in the second rule is not necessary. We could have written int semicolon s instead of int dot .ids semicolon s and the ktool would parse it and compile the definition correctly because it uses the same parser used for parsing programs also to parse the semantics. However, we typically prefer to explicitly write the nothing values in the semantics for clarity. The parser has been extended to accept this. Note that the first rule matches the entire k cell because in semicolon is a top level program constructing imp, so there is nothing following it in the computation cell. The anonymous variable stands for the second argument of this top level program construct, not for the rest of the computation. The second rule could have been also been put in a complete k cell, but we prefer not to, for simplicity. Our imp semantics is now complete, but there are a few more things that we need to understand and do. First, let us briefly discuss the very first step of configuration abstraction. 
In K, all semantic rules are in fact rules between configurations. As soon explained in the in++ tutorial, the declared configuration cell structure is used to automatically complete the missing configuration parts in rules. However, many rules do not involve any cells, being rules between syntactic terms of sort K. For example, we had only three rules involving cells in our imp semantics. In this case, the K cell will be added automatically and the actual rewrite will happen on top of the enclosed computation. For example, the rule for the while loop is automatically translated into Since the first task in computations is what needs to be done next, the intuition for this rule completion is that the syntactic transition only happens when the term to rewrite is ready for processing. This explains, for example, why the while loop unrolling does not indefinitely apply in the positive branch of the conditional. The inner while loop is not ready for evaluation yet. We call this rule completion process, as well as other similar ones, configuration abstraction. That is because the incomplete rule abstracts away the configuration structure, thus being easier to read. As seen shortly when we define in++, configuration abstraction is not only a user convenience, it actually significantly increases the modularity of our definitions. The case cell completion is only the very first step though. Let us next discuss the two types of K rules, structural and computational. Intuitively, structural rules rearrange the configuration so that computational rules can apply. Structural rules therefore do not count as computational steps. A K semantics can be thought of as a generator of transition systems, one for each program. It is only the computational rules that create steps or transitions in the corresponding transition system, the structural rules being unobservable at this level. By default, rules are all assumed computational, except for the implicit heating cooling rules that define evaluation strategies of language constructs, which are assumed structural. If you want to explicitly make a rule structural, then you should include the tag or attribute structural in square brackets right after the rule. These attributes may be taken into account by different K tools so it is highly recommended to spend a moment or two after each rule and think whether you want it to be structural or computational. Let us do it. We want the lookup and the arithmetic and boolean construct rules to be computational because they make computational progress whenever they apply. However, the block rules can be very well structural because we can regard them simply as syntactic grouping constructs. In general, we want to have as few computational rules as possible because we want the resulting transition systems to be smaller for analysis purposes, but not too few to lose behaviors. For example, making the block rule structural loses no meaningful behaviors. Similarly, the sequential composition, the while loop unrolling, and the no variable declaration rules can all safely be structural. Compile and then k-run the programs that you only parsed in lesson 1. They should all execute as expected. The state cell shows the final state of the program. The k cell shows the final code contents, which should be empty whenever the imp program executes correctly. Compile also with the minus minus pdf option and take a look at the generated documentation. The assignment rule should particularly be of interest because it contains two local rewrites. In the next lesson, we comment the imp definition and conclude this tutorial.